<laughs> this was Captain Luther. About a year after we met him, it was 1521. He was hiding away in St. Catherine's Wittenberg. This is where he translated the Bible into German. There in Wittenberg, where they had the big church, where you see how it is written. Now, about two years ago, in the year 1528, we were commissioned to paint a portrait. <laughs> There you are, Lucas Cranach. I have admired your work for so long and now we can meet. I have seen your magnificent woodcuts in the published things that I read. We have something in common, you know. Oh, not a gift of painting and drawing. I have no talent for that. We have not something in common in talent, but a common cause. Because you and I both are supporters of this man. Martin Luther. Yes, I have been reading his works. I have been studying his words. I have become convinced of his teaching. I have been defending his teaching. Well, allow me to introduce myself. I am Argula van Grumbach. I am a noblewoman, and I am from Bavaria. 
And for 10 years, I have been reading and corresponding with Martin Luther. And now finally, in this year of our Lord, 1530, I am able to meet him. I am convinced, my good man, that what he says is true. And it has emboldened me. I have not been able to keep silent. They do travel now that we have a printing press. Well, I brought the letter with me right here, the one that I told to the, the, that I wrote to the University of Ingolstadt. I was later being very angry with them. You see, there was this man who was a fa former teacher and a former professor there, and he started to promote Protestant views, and he was arrested. Well, I was enraged. I was enraged that he would be asked to recant, and I was enraged that a man would not do something about it. So I wrote the letter. Yes, I did. What have Luther and Melanchthon taught save the word of God? You have condemned them. You have not refuted them. That's what I said. And you know, in Saxony, you have these plucky electors that will support you, but not so in Bavaria. So I continued to write. You seek to destroy all of Luther's works. In that case, you have to destroy the New Testament, which he has translated into the German. The writings of Martin Luther and Melanchthon, I have found nothing heretical. Even if Luther should recant, what he has said would still be the word of God. You have the key of knowledge, but you close the kingdom of heaven. I send you not a woman's rantings, but the word of God. I write as a member of the Church of Christ, against which the gates of hell shall not prevail. And then do you know what I did, Mr. Cronick? I listed 80 scripture readings, and I told them that they needed to meet me in person, and we would argue them one by one by one. That's what I did, and I know I angered them, but I had to show them. I had to show them where they had closed their eyes to the truth. You know what? Martin Luther thanked me. He wrote about me in some of his letters, and I saved one of them. He called me a most noble woman. He said I was making a valiant fight with a great spirit, boldness of speech, and knowledge of Christ, why he named me a singular instrument of Christ. And I was humbled, and I knew that someday, someday, that I needed to meet him. You know, Lucas, it seems to me that delving into scripture as Luther did, why he returned us all to the basics in many ways, because he looked to the word alone, and he discovered that we humans had created doctrines and structures through which the church had misinterpreted God's truth. And that truth is something powerfully, amazingly simple. That our relationship with God is not based on what we do, not how much we achieve. Why, it's based on who we are, precious children of a loving creator. God loves us no matter how much we stray. God always invites us home and always showers us with forgiveness and love, promises never to abandon us. Through Christ, we wake up each morning new, Forgiven, renewed by the promises of God. And we become free. We are able to serve the Lord in Christ, in word and deed. Well, the Lord invites us to be Christ for the world. We share the love of Christ. Luther opened up the scriptures to us all. As you know, he translated it into German so that we could read it ourselves. And he further writes that we are the church. Not the building, not the institution. The church is all of us, a community of believers gathered around the word, gathered around the communion table. It's not a hierarchy of clerics. Wholeness, salvation, healing. It comes not through ecclesiastical rules, but it comes from receiving the promises of God. And they're free. That's what grace is, Lucas. Grace is God's free gift 
with no strings attached. I know that Luther has been called a heretic. I know that there are those that are angry with him. He has spoken out against indulgences, which have become a financial transaction for the forgiveness of sins. Who has heard of such a thing? He has challenged the clerical order. He has insisted that we are all priests. Yes, it's a priesthood of all believers. We can all mediate God's forgiveness, God's love. Yes, we are saints even as we are sinners. We are all holy. Set apart for a purpose. It will. It is free. But it is free to serve. Free to love. Freed from worry of God's our standing before God. It is in Romans that Luther read that great verse that we are saved by grace. That God's gift is free. Why Martin Luther says even the faith that we have is a gift from God. Yes. So tomorrow, I finally meet this man that I have admired for so long. And what do I want to tell him? Well, I want to tell him that he needs to continue his work. He needs to be careful. He needs to know that the movement is growing even in the parts of Bavaria. He needs to know that he must continue to proclaim word alone, Christ alone, faith alone, grace alone. I want him to know that I foresee a time when we will find common ground with our detractors because Christ's love, Christ's word, it will always ultimately unite and not divide because it is a word of love, of reconciliation, of acceptance, of grace. Who knows? Maybe it won't happen in our lifetime. Maybe it won't happen in our era. Maybe it will take 500 years before there is dialogue and there is partnership. But it will happen. We need reformers like Martin Luther to draw our attention back to scripture and to see where we might have strayed from God's truth. And we need the church because the church is where we come together to share the word, to share the communion table, to hear it and to be filled, to be reminded of who and whose we are. Brother Cranach, I like the sound of that. Sister Alura. So now may we help to proclaim with our brother Martin Luther the good news of God's love that we are freed to serve. Because after all, it is God's work, but it is our hands. Thanks be to God. <laughs>